All right, so hey guys, so I have Sanjay here, Sanjeev, and then Jordan. We're here at the AI Infra Conference, the summit, taking a look at what's going on. You guys are with InfraCore. Jordan, tell me a little bit about what InfraCore is. What do you guys got going on? Yeah, so InfraCore's main focus is build, design, and fund, and pre-lease data centers. So all things data center, designing, building, in, uh, the infrastructure for high density deployments, AI high density deployments. The demand in the market we all know is very large. Uh, we know where the market's headed, um, but there's a lot of data center companies that struggle with doing the same type of build and design as what's been. So we are focused on not only partnering with asset owners, landowners, existing facility owners um, on the financial side, but also on the build design side. So we're open to, and Sanjeev will talk more about this in a little bit, right. we're, we're open to joint ventures, joint development strategies with asset owners to create uh, high value conversations around new um, new age data centers uh, for high density and where the, the market's headed. Yeah, so, so high density data centers, we're talking power, we're talking how that gets to upstream, downstream, where that goes. How's that, how does that go to market look there? Like how fast can you get these spun yeah. up? It's a good question. So I think that's one of the biggest hurdles in the market, right? The power equipment, the switch gear, uh, everything that goes into building power deliverables to a powered shell, um, that can be a, a very long waiting period. So uh, right now on average, it's, it's 12 to 18 months that a lot of people are waiting on right. their power equipment. And then obviously conversations with the utility makes that a lot longer. <laughs> so our goal is uh, expediting that process. So we have uh, uh, exclusive rights to partnerships um, across the globe that yeah. they've cut that down, that time down in half. Um, and then we have um, uh, very unique offerings around generators and power equipment um, that is off-grid power supply for microgrids. And so yeah. when we're looking at what we're offering, time to market is the biggest value in that. It's not only the, the efficiency of, of the the generators and the power uh, switch gear, but right. it's the, the amount of time we can get that to the uh, the customer. Yeah, so the modularity, like where that's going, how to get it in, how to get it out, scale it up, right? So so maybe we go to Sanjeev, like what kind of technologies, like what kind of power are you bringing in? What does that look like on, on that side? Yeah, so we have several solutions for power um, and they're all, uh, let me just touch up on the financial piece a second. Because uh, our everything we do has to do with how do we get the multiples right so that uh, the time to uh, revenue is is as compressed as possible, and we want to we want to have a build a track record there. Uh, but as to your question about the types of power, we work with uh, with uh, some specialized uh, folks who have done uh, gas turbines that's that runs off of natural gas. We also have new technology that takes uh, into account the uh, the the methane, which is uh, CH4, then breaks it up into carbon nanoparticles that can be used for graphene, as well as uh, hydrogen, which can be put into a fuel cell. And as you know, hydrogen, if you, if you use it, you, you basically get water out of it. That water is actually usable in, uh, in, in applications as well. It can be used to cool the entire infrastructure too. So we have ways to lower the cost of cooling equipment, not uh, be, be carbon uh, neutral or neutral, carbon right. negative. Uh, as well as generate carbon credits as well. So all these paths, we have a, a slew of them. We also have uh, three nuclear solutions, to SMRs, small modular reactors, uh, to deploy all over the market. And we, we, we're not only solving our supply chain, we're solving our vendor's supply chain as well, because okay. it doesn't matter the, who is stuck where, we need to, some of these require critical minerals that the United States has little of, they have, to, they have to import it from other places. We're, we're, we're talking at the, the, the top levels of government to make sure that we right. can open up. So, so top level of government, very, again, very modular systems. You, you can kind of handle the power at any level, is kind of yeah. what I hear, back to the modularity and like the speed of, speed of now, which is 100% which is where AI is going. Like how fast can we move? We're not moving fast enough. That, that's the market share side. So, you know, on, on the government side, we, we we're hearing a lot about, you know, Project Stargate was a little bit, it was announced about it, but you mentioned government, and then you're talking, you know, the United States. So with sovereign AI or AI sovereignty, as these, as these first world countries and, and global countries come together and say, we're going to do AI, we're going to do it in-house, it's going to have our culture, our understanding, our like, best interest or whatnot. If we're focusing on the United States, 
What does that look like for you guys? Yes, so uh, I'll jump in real quick. Um, yeah, I think a lot of the land that we're working with, um, our, our qualifications is what's available, what natural resources are available, right? right. Uh, for, the, for microgrids, power delivery. Uh, we're uniquely positioned in the United States, which I think a lot of us know, and, and we should be proud of it, uh, for what we can do in the data center realm. And yeah. so if we're not tapping into that, I think we have some creative ways that we do that at Infracore. Um, we have really um, unique relationships with drilling companies using, using flare gas and waste gas to generate tons of power. And so when I say tons of tower, pa power, I'm from Texas, I live in Dallas, and there is a lot of waste uh, flare gas. And yeah. so we're working with organizations to monetize that so that we can transmit that power to ourselves or the utility. Um, that's one way of doing it in the United States, which right. I, I believe we need to tap into that. And so we're, we're processing and, and, and doing due diligence on every lot of land that we're looking at in that way. Yeah, I mean, that, that's smart, right? So Infracore, what, what I'm hearing is Infracore is not only building power, not only building modular, scalable power, it's building power with the whole end-to-end -end in sight. It's mm -hmm. saying, right. do you need it? We got it. What comes out of that? What is the waste product of that? How do we drive that? Going back to, I mean, I mean, I know we just mentioned it, but like carbon nanotubes and graphene and those kind of things, that is a byproduct, yeah. but you're able to use that scientifically for all kinds of things. You want to talk about kind of like that looks like. Yeah, so, so a little bit focused on the, on the carbon uh, nanoparticles that come out. It's a simple commodity that if you want to sell on the commodity market, it fetches like over $50 per kilogram. It's a, it's a high-end commodity. Uh, so we have an off-taker for that. But in addition, uh, the, and so what they might do or what we might do in turn is to create uh, single layer filters for water. So you use it for water desalination. Right. You could use it for separating gases. For example, one of the common use cases in uh, uh, as natural gas comes out, it's called sour gas, mm -hmm. which means there are certain impurities in it. And so to, to separate out from the CH4 uh, with uh, other butane and propane and other things that come out of it versus things that we don't want like uh, uh, NOx, uh, you know, things that noxious produce fumes, NOx. right, right? Yeah, so we, we don't want that. So you can use uh, a system to uh, that's based on graphene to to separate out these these, these elements there. Um, and I'd be remiss to say that uh, we, we also have other solutions where we can take the water that's being produced to, in uh, waste wastewater. In right. fact, filter uh, that. I mean, yeah, and then use that to produce water to cool. But then also after that cooling if there's excess, which we expect that to be, to, uh, to supply to the local um, uh, water system, like irrigation and such. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the future, right? Like fresh water, where is it going? The, I mean, the sewage in general, like that whole side of, has never been disrupted. It's never been changed really right. over time. We've added some farming capabilities right. with, with fish and stuff like that. It's, it's really interesting to hear that, like, again, like Infracore, a power company that's generating power all over the United States, Building these things up is really driving not only the beginning but the end, and, and really like making money off of waste that comes out of it, right? Right. right so then, yeah. um, so one question would be, what is what is is that what green technology looks like now? Like, are you kind of I almost like I've talked to many different companies, and and nobody's looking at the end to end, and and when they do, they look at a certain style of end to end, but not the full end -to -end style. So, are you kind of redefining what green technology is? Right, so I want to use the word green carefully here because uh, there's different meanings of that. What we'll say is that the most practical solution out there is what we care about because yeah. we don't want to go, we don't, we don't expect tax subsidies, we don't want that. That's not great for the taxpayer at all. Uh, so we, we, we want to be, uh, we want to stand on our own two feet right. and be able to make a profitable business by using the methods like I described. Uh, so that's our goal, and this goes for nuclear, this goes for even, so data centers, as you may know, have like a negative connotation in the, uh, in the social space. Yeah, like, oh, the heat come and, and the fans up, and the, yeah. The, all they do is come and take up our resources, they don't give anything back to, to the system, so uh, to the society or the local government there, or local places. So, there could be solutions where we produce something of value to the local community, the state, as well as the, the national government. As well. well, I mean, there's even the fact of like smart cities. I think we yeah. talked a little bit about that, you know, earlier. But like in general, the, the HVAC systems. How do you how do you leverage the heat from these systems? How do you yeah. then clean the water of those same systems? You need everything on site. You don't need things that are way off site driving that. 
right. causing more yeah. inflection, causing more inflammation yeah. into the system. You're you're leveraging that as well. Yeah, we want to be as self-sustained as possible. That's fantastic. And this, and I think we may have talked about superconductors as well, and that yeah. that allows for uh, better, uh, lower cost of cooling. Right. Uh, lower cost of transformers, like all of that re gets reduced. So I think I think there's a, a, lots of opportunities for data centers to kind of rebrand themselves as being sustainable in the truest sense. Yeah, I mean that's the thermodynamics that a whole, like you're solving for the fact that it's understood, you're going to create this, you're going to drive it forward. So yeah, so, so time to market is faster, you're leveraging, you know, United States assets, building that out, you're doing it, you know, not looking for like, yeah, I mentioned green, but not looking for like those those subsidies, but just like, that's how people understand it. They go, how are we being carbon neutral? How are we doing this? Um, I mean, maybe a lot of other things that people people look at in the business side is they think that coal power is, is dirty and bad. And I think, I mean, Jordan, I think you, you've explained it's, it's not anymore. Like, yeah. how is how does that work? Yeah, there, there's technology now where you're, you're burning the waste back on the, the coal. Right. through the process. And so what used to be waste now is increasing the burn rate of that coal. So it's it's actually very efficient and we're getting more power out of it. So uh, the, the good thing about where we are in the market yeah. is people are getting really innovative and it's affecting the way um, you know the industry is going to be today, but also 10 years down the road. And what we have in our portfolio of offerings to our customers, not only that are in our facilities, but also who we're building for, is those questions, right? Well, a lot of the land we have may have access to, to coal. And right. people are- It's like right there. Yeah, yeah, in the beginning they're like, whoa, hold on. Yeah. You know, but once we explain the technology and what we have, no matter what state you're talking about, no matter what location you're talking about, both sides can get on board with what, we're, what we have to offer, right. which we're excited about. And we've seen both sides, their eyebrows raise when we actually explain the, the nuts and bolts of the efficiencies right. here. The theory and practice and say, hey, like you win, you win, you win, why don't we go do this exactly. together? And it's good for everybody all around, and it's good for the, the country, it's good for everything else, and, and so that, that's fantastic. So Texas meets California. <laughs> uh, kind of, right? I mean, in general, Texas that's has that right. mindset of like, let's bring it together, your Texas neighbor, your neighbor. California. That's yeah, right. there you go. Yeah. I'm originally from Texas too, so oh, hey, it works out. There we go. You both now. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, so anything else that you want to share? Uh, I mean, coming here and seeing all the different infrastructure coming together, I think that's super smart here. But, uh, you know, Infracore, how are you, how, how are you leveraging that aspect of like maybe like this event or anything else you want to share about what Infracore does or like a, a use case or something that's just like, man, we, we see this all the time. What does this look like? Yeah, we, we, we work with uh, multiple kinds of stakeholders in Infracore. Uh, we have landowners, we have uh, mineral rights owners, we have uh, people who have capital who want to deploy to the data center space without really help us out, right? Yeah. And then we have obviously the big players uh, in this room. So we have, a, we have different kinds of relationships with each of them. Each of them are value additive and we carefully track that. Yeah. Uh, so for example, we have uh, at least 20 projects. Uh, we can't name the names just yet, as, uh, but they're all about a gigawatt or more uh, in the United States and we have uh, various sources of funding for that. So just want to spread the word out to see if uh, people are interested in partnering with us. And uh, yeah, do you want anything? No, I think you hit it, uh, you know, a lot of people want to get into the industry. Right. They see the hype. We're, as Sanjeev's saying, we show a lot of flexibility in how to partner with companies. We have a, a, a opportunity we're working on right now where somebody's just con contributing the asset and, and, as a land. And that's our JV, that's our joint development. And that's all they're investing. So if there is landowners out there that want to get in the industry, we have the funding, we have the know-how, we have the construction, we have the unique power deliverables, and yeah. we can go to market together. And the phased revenue as well. We that's right. Bitcoin mining to get revenue in the first six months, and then yeah. in parallel, we'll also build out the, the the infrastructure and the data center itself uh, to 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 the. So our our goal is to get the entire thing to market, the full data center, or the first phase of it in like 12 to 15 months. I yeah. you know fingers crossed there. <laughs> but the the Bitcoin mining piece is a truly tested uh, ecosystem, so we know how to do that. It, it is. So cool. So how do people, so I mean, you're looking for partners, looking to drive this through, working with landowners. How do people get a hold of Infracore? So they're infracore.ai. Yep. Um, they can go there. There's a, um, an opportunity sheet they can fill out uh, to, to, to get a meeting with us. Um, and then we all obviously have uh, all our emails. So I'm Jordan at infracore.ai, Sanjeev San at infracore.ai. Yep. And, and you know, we're readily available to, to have these conversations with people. 
Cool. Well, fantastic. Thanks for thanks for meeting me today, and and fantastic learning about Infracore. So, yeah, Sanjeev, Jordan, appreciate it. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, guys. Yeah, appreciate it.